Boy, do I love me some Vanguard shenanigans, and that's exactly what we've got here with this battle between Flying Taco with Corn and... Yes, poor little Karnak here about to eat a couple of volleys of Hagbane tips from Rider of Rohan's uh, Glade Riders here with the Hagbane tips. Definitely a very solid choice against Corn, where demonic units are seen, and just generally because of the poison, but yeah, that magic damage increasing damage versus demonic units is definitely very useful here. He's got four of those Hagbane tips. And then two Glade Captains with a Lore of Life Spellweaver up on an eagle here. We've got some Wild Riders with shields and the Wild Hunters of Kurnos and the Wardens of Kithrel, Regiment of Renown. Uh, War of Wildwood Rangers, you don't see these guys super often, but you have spears and shields, armor sundering, uh, very elite stats, but not a lot of armor. On the opposite side here for Taco, we've got some Flesh Hounds. And it looks like Chaos, Lord of Corn on the Chariot with basically nothing else. Super interesting choice. We'll have to take a look at this after the fact. Uh, Exalted Blood Letters there. We've got some Blood Crushers as well. Uh, Skull Crushers. Yeah, so the Anti-Large variant here and the Blood Crushers is, of course, the Demonic one with Anti-Infantry and Fire Damage. They also get uh, Weakness to Fire as well in an AoE, so quite strong there. Some Marauders and Furious to round things out. Let's get things rolling as Karnak immediately takes a good chunk of damage. He's going to have to be careful. Of course, he doesn't have to really worry to uh, maybe be worried about getting sniped by the Spellweaver. It's not like the Spellweaver would want to charge in, but actually uses Prey of the Blood God there to freeze the Spellweaver in place. The Bloods of the Hunt. What is it? Bloods of the Hunt Hound? Bloods of the Dead Hunt is what they are. This Regiment of Renown here getting absolutely wrecked by Wild Riders on that initial engagement, but here in the center, oh, look at that beautiful charge, absolutely gorgeous charge from the Chaos Lord of Corn. although he pretty quickly does kind of get stuck in with the Gorby's Chariot. I don't know, it just has some acceleration issues, but seemingly can't pull through, well, the cavalry definitely, but even was having issues kind of pulling through those infantry there, so... That is going to lead the Lord of Corn to being stuck on the Wardens of Kithral momentarily. Take a ton of damage. Wild Hunters getting up and around to deliver some little rear charges here. Side charges. Skull Crushers also getting in here. Starting to wreck those Wild Riders. The Flesh to Stone will help somewhat, obviously. The Skull Crushers Mortal Variant doesn't have magic damage, but Karnak getting in there. Got the Blood Letters as well. Oh yeah, absolutely beautiful Anarchy here, which is definitely something... Corn's going to love, but taking a lot of damage in the process. Those elves are not going quietly. Speaking of going quietly, uh, the Chaos Lord of Corn already getting rounded off here is definitely unfortunate for Taco, but let's see if he can salvage, salvage the situation. Karnak, again, really wants to just kind of mirror wherever the Spellweaver goes as much as possible, um, but for the time being, Spellweaver is going to pop in, do a little bit of healing on this line, pull up on station with these Hagbane tips and try and shoot into the back. Or rear charge. That's also a bold move. Yeah, the Hagbane tips definitely want to try and focus their fire as much as possible on, like, these Exalted Bloodletters are probably the best target, right? They're demonic, don't have a lot of armor, pretty expensive, so those Hagbane tips are going to do a lot of work, not to mention debuffing their weapon strength. It's also going to be quite nice with that poison effect, but uh, yeah, the Spellweaver does go after the Lord of Corn there to try and chase him off with the Hagbane tips also hanging around. More Hagbane tips firing into the rear here, but this massive death blob of corn units looking pretty scary right now. A lot of these uh, elven cavalry, melee cavalry at least, have taken massive damage. Of course, what little infantry they did take also taking massive damage. Karnak manages to escape there, get out in space and catch the Spellweaver on the ground, use that Prey of the Blood God there, uh, and some of the Blood Crushers to keep... Skull Crushers. Yeah, Blood Crushers. Yeah, those are the demonic ones. Anyway, keep her locked on the ground. Karnak absolutely loves this type of situation. Absolutely what he was built for, to be honest. His theming, everything just stacked around that. Massive weapon strength with that Frenzy active. Not a lot of HP, but Link Last Cannon gets in there and wrecks the Spellweaver, though, with all of his uh, cooldowns and everything. Got the spell, uh, the summon, rather, of the Flesh Hounds off a little bit earlier. They've been chasing around these Glade Riders going to be feasting some value there as well. 31 kills, about 400 damage value by themselves so far. Uh, not to mention Karnak himself is, yeah, 1,800 damage value. So absolutely massive. More than 2,200. Chaos Lord of Corn manages to get his revenge on the chariot. Comes back and actually finishes off the spell Weaver there. So 
Both sides getting some nice back and forth here, but so many Glade Riders still remaining here with those Hagbane tips. You're going to get a nice opportunity to shoot at these blood letters here. Devastating Hagbane tips firing in. Also, of course, will be pretty good against those Heralds of the Corn's Fury. Um, that 100 armor will help somewhat, but, I mean, they have all right IP values. 7 AP per shot. It's definitely very solid, actually. Now, I didn't realize Hagbane tips are basically crossbows. That's actually really interesting. Did they changed that at some point. I completely missed when that happened. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be pretty solid, especially with that magic damage against those Heralds of Corn's Fury. You can see they're kind of getting some little hits there, taking their little leadership. Maybe they should save some ammunition for Karnak in the late game as well. Um, hard to say. They have quite a bit of ammunition left right now, so we're going to fast forward as uh, Rider Rohan activates the kite phase here. The uh, corn forces of Taco are going to try and take Blade Captain off the field. This one manages to rally and get back to the fight. This other one is pretty much doomed, getting chased off by Karnak, but Blade Riders continuously kind of surrounding and charging the Skull Crushers there. Not wanting to use up too much of their ammunition. Yeah, are able to route their leadership without shooting too much, although they do end up shooting a little bit in there, but I think actually the targeting is going into those uh, Exalted Blood Letters. Yep, looks like we see the focus fire there on those ranged indicators, so pretty heavy damage coming in. Of course, the speed debuff. That Elven accuracy works a little bit against them at times, though, where you can see Sometimes they overkill an individual target, and then lots of arrows will just land on the ground. But, uh, yeah, here, just getting to shoot out in the open fields. Really nice shots. The Exalted Blood Letters aren't long for this world. Well, again, we'll continue to fast forward here. Blade Captain jumps in to kind of brace for a minute. Ends up paying a significant price as Karnak shows up once again. Pops his little abilities here. And uh, it's going to be all over for the Blade Captain. She gets shattered. Skull Crushers, Blood Crushers, rather, immediately going to switch directions. But uh, yeah, now Karnak could be in a little bit of trouble. He's in a concave of magical poison arrows. There aren't that many arrows left, so it's going to be fairly critical uh, for Karnak to not get focus fired by what remains. Maybe see if Taco can potentially dodge some of those shots with his micro, but if he's prioritizing elsewhere, he might not see in time, but yeah, Ryder Rohan switches onto these Heralds of the Corn's Fury. I guess he figures Karnak's weak enough, like one more volley probably finishes him off. Let's see here. His Glade Riders point blank range. Will they get the volley off in time even? we forced to move a little bit, a little bit of cut and run with Karnak, a little bit of close in dodging. Kinda, ooh, took that volley pretty much square though. That was not good. Yeah, that almost forces him into demonic instability to the point where, yep, he's pretty much done for at this point. Question is, the loss of that last bit of ammunition. I mean, I guess it is mostly just Marauders left. Karnak does manage to recover his leadership, actually. And the Lord of Corn is also just kind of chilling over here right now. But uh, let's see. Heralds of Corn's Fury. Whoop, Karnak again, kind of dipping in and out of demonic instability. But, ooh, nice little square volley there. Easily takes him out. Blade Riders charge in for their final go. Well, I say final go. A little bit of cycle charging here, I would imagine. These units back and forth. But uh, the Heralds of Corn's Fury, only about 700 HP left. Look, another couple volleys down there. Takes them, yeah, not quite below 600. Against all of this Blade Rider cavalry, I just, I don't know. They are... They are corn... Nope, and Demonic Instability takes over, and uh, that's... Oh, nope, maybe not, maybe... Uh, yeah, the Marauders by themselves definitely won't do it, and I do, they just don't have the leadership left at this point. Yep, they just... Gone with the wind. And that'll be a game. Well, quite a game. Quite a back and forth there, Taco. Uh, having a nice charge initially with his Lord, but then the Lord obviously getting stuck in. It's a classic Gorby's Chariot problem. I think it's something to do with their animations. I'm not 100% sure. But, uh, interesting, uh, Karnak was really the carry, obviously, 2,700 damage value himself, 10,000 damage dealt, plus the summon, of course, puts him well over 3,000, absolutely spectacular performance from the old boy, of course, uh, Exalted Blood Letters also managed to pretty much pay for themselves in melee, it's nice to see both the cavalry do a decent job, maybe not quite as much, like a few hundred off from what you would want, but, uh, 
built the actual flesh hounds just got completely destroyed here. Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately just getting completely outclassed by the Wild Riders, all of which pretty much pay for themselves. Yep, uh, kind of, I guess if you average them out. Blade Riders obviously were the big carry here, all pretty much getting their value plus a couple hundred each. The Wardens of Kithral were an interesting choice here, even though they got savaged pretty hard, didn't pay for themselves, but still it's uh, definitely nice to see them in a build. And I guess didn't pay for themselves value-wise, but tactically just doing all that damage to the Lord of Corn ended up being pretty important in the long-term ramifications of the game, for sure. Which, uh, Lord of Corn, let's actually take a look at him to kind of tie things up here. On the Chariot, seems interesting. Again, the issues with the Gorby aside, in theory, if it works correctly, it seems like a pretty appealing option. I don't think it's insanely expensive if you cut all this stuff. Just take the Gorby's Chariot. Yeah, 1450 is not a crazy amount of value to be losing out on, even if he does get sniped. Um, and decent stats on the Chariot. Not great melee defense, but 130 armor is pretty good. But I have to do a little bit more testing with Gorby's single entity and see if it was just the Wild Riders that were actually blocking it in there, or if it does have issues even pulling through light infantry, because that's what the Wardens of Kithral are, right? And pretty much all Wood Elf infantry could be classified as light infantry, maybe other than Dryads. Maybe arguably more medium infantry at 60 armor. Um, Mass-wise, still pretty light, though, and loose formation. And, of course, yeah, I mean, yeah, what, are, what is the mass of these guys? I'm only 110 mass. I was, was going to say, I think that's pretty common across, yeah, all the elven units. They do benefit from having a tighter formation, of course, but just out of curiosity, I think that is maybe uh, high elves actually have a little bit more mass. So, yeah, should be able to pull through the lightest mass infantry in the game, at the very least. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.